May God bless you and welcome to our weekly message. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for the message you're about to give us. We pray it will be your words and no one else's, and that it will go forth for your glory. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Let us go to Revelation chapter 20, verse number 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, forever and ever. The title of our message today, Forever and Ever. And we see the devil, who seems to be such a force in this time, who seems to be tearing up so many lives in this time, who seems to be influencing so many different things in this time, who seems to be destroying families, destroying minds, destroying everything that he can get his hands upon. Everything that will allow him in, he comes in and he destroys. The thief comes before to steal, to kill, and to destroy. John 10, 10 tells us. For to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's, that's his goal, his purpose. It's his job and to give him no praise whatsoever, but he is good at what he does. But the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. That's his ultimate fate. That's where he ends up. Where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That is where, no matter what his kingdom may look like in this hour, for the kingdom of heaven is a kingdom where only faith seems to really give you a true picture of it. It's this amazing, amazing place that we're going to talk about as we go. But, but in this hour, when our fleshly eyes, our temporal vision, sees only this, that kingdom sometimes seems so far away. And I love that verse where John the Baptist is sitting there in prison. This mighty man of God, this mighty, mighty man of God. I'd love to have met him, love to have talked with him, love to have heard him preach. What a mighty man of God. He sits in prison and he sends a message to Christ. Are you the one we should be looking for? Or should we look for another? Should we expect another? You know, it becomes like that in this hour, in this time. In this time, it becomes... Something of a chore some days to stay on this path when the devil seems to have everything so completely organized in an anti-God fashion. He seems to even make it look like he or the Lord don't exist in an effort to make people look his way because if he can make you think the Lord doesn't exist, he's got you as well. And he's just all out to destroy to truly destroy in this hour. But forever and ever, he shall be tormented day and night. Forever and ever in that lake of fire, brimstone. It looks like he's got this thing. At Calvary, it looked like they had Jesus. It looked like it. You know, looks can be deceiving. Our God doesn't operate on what it looks like, on what man perceives it to be. He doesn't look at logic. Because just as we preached last week, the wisdom of man is foolishness unto God. God's wisdom is so much higher than man's wisdom. His ways are so much higher than our ways. Isaiah 55 will tell you. His ways are so much higher. He's God. When you're God, you can allow the enemy to run rampant, to take all the territory that he thinks he's taking right now, to take all the souls that he thinks he's taking right now, to influence all the people he's out to influence right now. Because you know forever and ever how it plays out. You know forever and ever 
is yours to control. Our God is in control of forever and ever. He's in control of right now. The enemy may not want you to believe that. He may be trying to keep your mind off of this truth. But this is the truth. As we read on, it says, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. As we preached the other day on five minutes with God, even King David was not exempt from God's judgments and God's punishment and God dealing with him and all the things that God so surely will do. None of us are exempt. None of us are too high or too low. But King David repented and he got this thing right before it was too late. You know, we'll stumble, we'll make mistakes, we'll pay for them and all those things. But when the books are open on this judgment day, it's too late. It says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Forever and ever. The lake of fire is where that devil goes. It's where that enemy goes. The one that seems to be riding so high, but he'll fall so low. And eternally, forever and ever, he's in that lake of fire. But you, brother, you, sister, don't go with him. Don't be lost to that lake of fire. As all the books are open and all the works are examined and all the things are looked at. And that book of life is opened up and they begin to look for the names. Make sure your name is in it. Make sure your name is written in that book of life. I don't care where you've ended up in this life. I don't care how far from God your life has taken you. How far you seem to be from the truth and all that. You can always come back to Him. Still breath in your lungs. You can still ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to be Lord of your life. Turn to Him and give Him who you are. Give Him your life. Forever and ever. It's too long to play with. Forever and ever is the ultimate final ending of everything. Today, tomorrow, this week, next week, time, when you're young, you know, it seems like you've got all the time in the world and all that. But I tell you, the older I get, every day I age another day, I realize that I don't have forever and ever in this world. I don't have forever and ever to make everything right before Him. I have today to live my life for Him. You have today to live your life for Him. Everything we do, more and more, let's line it up for Him. Make it about Him. More and more, forever and ever, is not a place you want to be caught without Jesus Christ. It's not a place you want to be in darkness. It's not a place you want to be in torment. I don't like a headache, much less a hell. I don't like a stuffed up nose, a sore throat, all the, the, the menial torments of this world. I don't care for those. I definitely don't want a hell where I'll be tormented for eternity. I definitely don't want to be a sinner caught in the hands of an angry God. Because God endures with love, mercy, grace, forgiveness. No matter where you are right now, I promise you, no matter where you stand, if you'll 
turn to Him. It can all be made right. It can all be made good. You know, the world may not have that type of, of system where you can come and, and simply apologize and live a different life and the world will just say, okay, you're pardoned. But we serve a king. There's a king on high who when he pardons, he can pardon totally. His pardon is above all. And he can pardon you today. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've gone. How it's turned out. He can pardon you. He can clean you up. No matter how dirty you think you've gotten. I've got a friend named Cain. I ask you to pray for him. He hit kind of a bottom. Thought about taking his own life. He's going through some things, addiction and things that, that so surely creep up in so many lives. And I don't judge him. I don't judge anybody that gets in those places. Because nobody knows how those people come to be there. The people in the prisons. Nobody knows the backstory on so many of those people and how they came to be there. But I want to tell you, forever and ever, for those people, doesn't have to be the lake of fire, no matter how far they've wandered. No matter what any of us have done, forever and ever in hell was not intended for you and I. It was intended for the devil and his angels that rebelled. That's what that forever and ever is intended for. That lake of fire, that torment and all that. God doesn't put people in hell. He gives them every single chance. Every single chance to come to Him. Yet they refuse. So many refuse. And they send themselves down that road. They send themselves to that place when you've got a God that does nothing but love, nothing but stretches arms out to a people. Christ came forth to seek and to save that which was lost. It was rejected. Put on a cross nailed up there by unjust men when all he did was come to love. All he did was come to save. All he did was come to reconcile a lost people to a loving father. And he made that bridge between us. We don't have to be lost in that lake of fire. We don't have to spend forever and ever in a hell. Chapter 21 of Revelation. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they, will be, they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. These things are passed away. Those that are found written in that book. Of life. Those that made Jesus the priority, no matter what the world looked like, no matter how big and impulsive the devil and his systems seemed to look, no matter how far heaven seemed to be, they kept their eyes on it. They made him their resolution for New Year's in their life. And they said, you know what, Lord, I'm going with you. One way or the other, I want to be yours. I want to be after you. I want you to be my God. You've got these people in darkness and torment forever and ever. That had all that love. They had access to every bit of that. And they denied it. They pushed it away. They said I'll do it some other time. I'm not worried about it today. I don't believe in that. Whatever they said. Whatever they said. And they go forever and ever. To the torment. The flames. And you've got. Behold, as it says in verse 3, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, 
and be their God. God himself shall dwell with them and be their God. They've got God's presence. You know how you go to an anointed church service and you go in there and you just feel like a million dollars because you just feel that peace, you feel that hope, you feel all that spirit just hitting you. And it's just the best feeling. You feel like you could just walk on the air if you had to. It's just the best feeling. You feel like a cloud, like so light. Imagine a place where that's all it is. That feeling never dies. The world goes after a high that it can't sustain. With these limited mortal bodies that can't take it, these hearts that can't contain the drugs and the poisons and all that that brings upon the highs. These highs that the devil has men killing for, has men chasing after. Men blowing all their money on, their fortunes and everything else. These false highs. And then you've got this loving true God with a high. Just as natural and pure as there's ever been. He's not selfish with it. It doesn't make you have to do anything questionable, anything illegal, anything wrong to have this high. Just walk with me. Come after me. Put me first. Deny yourself and put me first. Present your bodies a living sacrifice to me. And I'll give you this piece here. I'll bless you here. I'll work with you here in this world. No matter how hard your life might be, I'll get you through this. And then, and then I'm going to take you to a place better than you could ever dream. A place where there's no tears. The tears are wiped from their eyes. There's no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. All that mess is gone. Because you stayed true with me till the end. You followed after me and this is where it led you. My child, come home. A God that only wants the best for us here and there and everywhere. Forever and ever. What a father. He doesn't just provide for the baby. Doesn't provide for it till it's like 18, like in the United States. And then you're considered an adult and then you're kind of on your own. Doesn't just provide for the kid till the kid dies. Provides eternally, forever and ever. If they'll let him. He says, I want to be your father if you'll let me be your father. I want to be your parent, eternally. I want to show you all the good things, not some of them, all the good. All the glory that waits. It says, and he that sat upon the throne said, behold, I make all things new. We preached on that recently. And he said unto me, right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Man, the fountain of the water of life. It don't get no better than that. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his God. He shall be my son daughter, my child, those that overcome forever and ever, forever and ever. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. makes it clear that those that will lay down all the mess, that will lay down all the sin, come after him. They'll inherit all things. They'll overcome forever and ever. But the other The other won't come out so good. The fearful. The unbelieving. The abominable. Murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers. And idolaters. All liars. They shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Which is the second death. Let 
Let us put our lives in order in this life so that forever and ever we can reign on high with the one that so surely is, the one that so surely has, so surely will, forever and ever. Be God. Be above all. Let us give ourselves to Him. Let us put our trust in Him. The bright lights of the world, the noise, and all the things that seem so appealing that we know are sinful. And He'll put it in your heart. What you need to do and what you don't need to do, He'll convict your heart. Ask Him, Lord, show me. Read in the Word. He'll show you where you need to go, what you need to be a part of. These two chapters of Revelation lay it out so beautifully. A brother asked me the other day my views on Revelation, how I understood it all. Truly, I don't know when exactly Christ comes back and, and all the, the things that are going to bring it about. I don't think anybody does, no matter how sure they seem to be. But I can tell you this. I can tell you that you and me, we need to be ready for forever and ever. That's what we need to make the path ready for in our life. And it all comes down to making Jesus Lord and Savior of your life. And brother and sister, no matter where you stand today, you can make Him Lord and Savior of your life. You can be forgiven. You can be washed clean. You can be on the road to that perfect place. A heaven. It's better than you ever dreamed. The forever and ever that everybody truly needs. The torment, the suffering, and all that that's down the other road. You can turn from it today, no matter where you stand. If, you, if you're tired of that other road, if you're tired of that other path, and you're ready to go toward the real forever and ever that's peaceful, that's good, where all the tears are wiped away. There's no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There's peace and joy everlasting. If you're ready to go that way, won't you pray with me today? Ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and get on that road and continue forth with us on this journey or, or whatever journey you choose to be on as long as you're with Him. Won't you pray with me now? Give your life to Him. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I'm a sinner and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I ask you to come into my life and to take over. Please let me live the rest of my days for you, Lord, in every way. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, given your life to it, get in this Bible, find you a good Bible, believe in church. Feel free to message me. My name is Travis Williams. I'll be glad to give you any advice I can, pray with you, encourage you, whatever I can do. And I'll be baptized if you've not been baptized. If you've not, we'll try to find a church where you're at. If you have don't have any church people that you know or, or whatever the case might be, whatever we can do to help you, we will with this, this ministry. But just get on this path and go after Him more and more. Don't be lost forever and ever in that lake of fire. For it will surely come, that day will surely come when the devil and everything that he's built, everything that he makes look so amazing to our eye and to our senses when it all comes tumbling down. And that new heaven and that new earth, I want to be part of that. I want to be part of all the good things God has in store for his people. All those that are found written in that book of life. All those that have overcome this world that will enter into the next and inherit all things. And he'll be our God. We'll be his people forever and ever. That's the way the story should end in your life and mine and every other life that will. Let us not miss out on this thing, for it's too precious. This is the only true thing that matters in any life, in any soul. It's the eternity. Let's get it right, brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Father, we just ask 
that so many hearts would be convicted, that so many would turn to you, Father. We pray for revival, Lord, in all lands, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that this message would go forth. Just touch as many as you'd have it to touch, Father. We just ask that more and more people would just commit to you, Father. And help us, Lord, to commit to you every day, Lord. Help us to get closer to you, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. May God bless you.